You're listening to the Finding Careers in podcast. I'm Pete Newsom. I'm with Ricky Baez today. Ricky, how in the world are you? Halfway through the year. My Christmas tree's still up. You're that guy. Well, I see your Christmas lights behind you. So maybe <laughs> that's just your thing or you're you're that guy in the neighborhood. I love Christmas, man. I really do. Every time I go to Tennessee, there's that Christmas in hotel, even in July. It's just fun to go see it. Christmas in July. Okay. That's well, right. you know, uh, maybe we can give a little Christmas in July to whoever's interested in expanding their career and knowing how to manage it better since that's what we're going to talk about today. So any, any gifts that we'll be able to give through that? Oh my God. For, you know what though? Yes. Yes. Because Pete, I don't know if you've noticed, um, actually you have, cause you read the newspapers just like I do. For those of you who don't know, that's a paper where the news used to be printed on, right? Yeah, In case I, you don't I, know I, what that I is. Have, I have no newspaper gets delivered anymore. <laughs> ah, got it. Well, there's a lot of layoffs happening, Pete, and it keeps happening. It keeps happening. And I think it's, there's no better opportunity than now to talk about how people can stand out in that saturated job market these days. Yeah, what we're really talking about is how to manage your own career and, and mm -hmm. specifically your career growth and advancement. Although, uh, you know, today that uh, I think a lot of uh, younger professionals have um, a pessimistic outlook on that, on mm -hmm. their opportunities professionally, financially. Um, that is something that my generation, uh, you know, because I'm a little bit older than you, I have to admit that. Uh, yeah, you know, we didn't uh, we didn't have that view, but I was speaking to some of our younger colleagues yesterday on our Gen XYZ podcast. I was there. I saw it. Yeah, and they, um, you know, they're uh, that the, the younger generations don't see a great road ahead, and that's why we're going to talk about this today because we want to arm everyone, not not just younger professionals, but them in particular, with uh, ideas that they may not have uh, with with new ways and to think about mm. their career and how to take the management of it, um, uh, you know, in, in their, put it in their own hands and yep. do something about it. So I don't know, what do you think about that outlook? So there are a lot of layoffs, but yeah. I think um, you know, with technology and the, the remote opportunities that are so prevalent today, I think it's a great time to be a, a, a aspiring young professional. Oh, oh, Pete, absolutely. And, and I don't think people realize what, what a diamond in the rough this is right now. Because, yes, it doesn't feel good because people are being laid off. Um, lives are being disrupted. But for a lot of them, they've been thinking about jumping ship for, for a long time. So for a lot of those folks, this is that turning point that they need to actually to be, you know, kind of like COVID, right? That's why there was so much, um, so many people jumping ship on or after Kobe because they were pushed over. So this is happening right now. I really think the uh, the key points that we have today is really going to help a lot of people going forward and managing their careers. So I'm excited for this one. Good. Well, let's let's not waste any time and get into it and really talk about what um, what career development is. That that let's start with that because okay. the the, you know, the premise here is that. You um, shouldn't just make things up as you go. You want to take the time to invest in yourself and in, in your career and come up with a strategic plan that you can refer to over time. Uh, it will change. It will evolve. We know that. There's a reason why the Zengig logo is um, is is a Z, it, and it's a winding path. That is not a coincidence. As uh, as we that was on purpose. That was, yeah, the original logo design was really, uh, I, I asked it for it to be a winding path that turned into uh, the the sort of funky Z that it is now. Yeah, yeah. Because after you know, so many years in staffing and knowing so many people who have started off in one direction as a young person thinking they were, you know, they knew what they wanted to do, went to school for a specific training or a degree that ended up pivoting into something entirely differently. Yeah. And that happens and it doesn't happen. Um, you know, sometimes it happens by coincidence, but you should be looking ahead in, in constantly assessing where you are. So that's uh, probably the first thing I would say in terms of career development is self-assessment to really understand where you are in life, where you want to be in life, and then mm -hmm. putting together a plan to get there. So at Zengig, I, yeah, our little commercial is uh, I'll, I'll throw in is that we have hundreds of uh, career guides on the site that exist for that very purpose to lay out 
um, how to transition into a, a, a new role, what the role consists of, how to um, uh, you know how to join that profession if you're not in it today. So enough about that. Go to zengig.com, check out our career guides. But um, once you have that plan, then it becomes a matter of you know, skill development, finding a mm-hmm. mentor. We've talked about that recently. And then if you're going to transition, you know, there's specific steps you should take. So let's go ahead and, and start off um, you know, talking about that and, and say, you know, let me ask you, why, why is all that important? I mean, it just listed a whole lot of things. <laughs> what, why would you say it's important? Well, let me, let, let me back up real quick because I think it's important to make a distinction between a job and a career. Okay. Two completely different things, right? A job, it's somewhere where you go, you give up your time for your talent and exchange, you get some money. A career is your passion. Now, I say that loosely because there's some people who've made a career out of jobs, <laughs> right? So it really depends. So so, so you started off right because you said, you know, you have to put a plan together on what you want to do, what you're passionate about, what you want to keep doing. But you said something really interesting, and that's important for people to understand. There are going to be some pivots in that plan. There are going to be some milestones that you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I'm going to have to make a hard left or a hard right. And if you don't have a plan in place, you may make a mistake in where you go. So the plan needs to be there because look, I know a lot of people, they decide what they want to be when they're in high school or college. And and that's fine. But to me, but they think they want to be, right? Exactly. Right. Because then they get there and they're like, whoa, this is not the career that I wanted. I'm not happy. But then they see their 15 years in that career. And they're like, I'm already been here for 15 years. Let's do another 15 because I spent all this time on it. The best example I can give to counterpoint that Pete is let's just say you're driving to New York from Florida and, you know, on the GPS says, all right, now you got to go to Texas. You, you ended up in Texas, right? You, you, you're, you're way out West because you've made that trip. Are you going to continue going to California? No, you're going to recalibrate, right? Let's come back and go to New York. So you got to have a good plan in place and really take a self-assessment on what you're passionate about and what your skill sets are and align those together. Boom. There you have your, uh, your uh, career management plan. And, and know that it will, your interest and desires uh, will change and evolve. Yes, it will. What you think is important at 15, if I look back, uh, I won't uh, go through the list of things that I... G.I. Uh, Joe's, that's what I thought was important uh, at 12. Yeah, well, I mean, even at, at, at 15, 17, 18, as you're getting into college, even 22, 23, for those who are entering the professional workforce, um, you know, it, it's okay. If, if, if it changes, it, your life will, will evolve. So don't, don't get too hung up on, on that. Mm-hmm. But that's where the self-assessment comes in. And that's something that should persist throughout your career as it, as it evolves. But it all starts with a goal right after yep. that. Once you have an idea of what you want to do, we recommend putting together a SMART goal. Are you familiar with SMART goals, Ricky? I know you are. Uh, oh, yes. I mean, I wouldn't be smart if I didn't know the SMART goals. Where's the put up? You there you go. That, a little, uh, a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Fridays. I'm sorry. Go. So, uh, so what's a smart goal? It's a goal that is uh, meets a number of uh, criteria, and and yeah. smart is an acronym in this case for goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. And the timely part is as important as anything else. You have to put a, a deadline on that goal, or it's just a thought and an idea, right? I mean, if I want to lose weight which I do, do I want to lose X pounds by X date or do I want to just keep it open-ended if I, if I put a, a time and an, a specific objective about it on it, my chances of success are infinitely better. Otherwise I'm just talking, right? That's it, correct. It. And, and look in, in smart goals, it took me a while for me to figure out smart goals. I mean, I knew what it was, but the power of it, because I was one of those when people told me, if you have a goal, write it down. What the hell is that going to do? I mean, that that was my thought. What is writing a goal down, go, um, uh, writing a goal down going to do? And I finally did it. And what I realized is once you write it down, right, it's there. It's tangible. You can feel it. You can touch it. It's no longer a thought that goes away. Once you write it down and you start getting into more details and start reverse engineering on what milestones you're supposed to hit. Next thing you know, you no longer have a thought. You now have a plan 
And exactly how you said, the best the, the best example I can give about a SMART goal is losing weight. If I say, I want to lose weight, that in itself, as 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 um as um uh smart as it can be, that in itself is not gonna help you. But if you say, I want to lose a hundred pounds by this time next year. And this is where my milestones are going to be. And this is how I'm going to do it. Because you put that together, because you spend the time focusing on that, you're going to want to see it through. So yes, write those goals down. Make sure you're really specific and reverse engineer it till you hit little wins every 30 days or so. And you'll figure out once you stop and you look, wow, I've actually made it. I did a smart goal, but you've got to be flexible. If you apply the same logic and thought process to uh, anything you want to accomplish, it this is where these goals really start to yeah. make a lot of sense. And I look at my own experience. This is not just advice that I give to others in their career. It's something that I've uh, applied myself where I've achieved success or failed by not doing this. Yeah. Uh, when when I've I, I used to run. I used to run long distances, and and I would start with a, a race date, and the race date you know, always had a link associated with it, whether it was a 5K or a marathon, and then work backwards uh, to where you are now to put together a training plan. What steps are you going to take? How frequently you're going to run? So when you start applying the that thought process to your career, the the road really becomes a lot more clear to you. Mm -hmm. And the steps that you need to take, if you want to uh, achieve uh, a position at a certain level, work for a new organization or transition into an entirely new career, all of these things apply. They're going to have very different paths that you need to take and timelines associated with each, but you have to start. So SMART goal, there's lots written about SMART goals. We'll put a link to a, a blog article um, on that in, the, in our show notes. So start there. And then you want to find a career mentor. Now we recently oh. talked about that on a podcast, so we won't rehash all of that. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you have anyone listening, you know, please check that out. But let's just talk from a high level uh, for those who haven't uh, heard that episode uh, about what the benefits are of finding a career mentor. You know, Pete, when I watch a commercial for McDonald's and I see a Big Mac and I see that beautiful burger on there. They only show you the good things about that burger. It's not until you actually meet the burger. And you're like, oh, wow, there's some really nasty things about this as well. That's what a mentor does. It gives you a reality check. A good mentor will tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly about that career. That's what a good mentor is. So if you find yourself a mentor, this is for the mentee looking for a mentor. If you find a mentor that tells you everything is great about this job, no downside at all, red flag. <laughs> red flag. Every job has the good, the bad, and the ugly. You want to find somebody that is authentic and can give you the real deal. That way you can make an informed decision on whether this is the path you want to follow. There's a lot written about the benefits of a, of a career mentor. It, 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 that guidance can be invaluable. Uh, as you as you go through your career, or as as important as anything else, maybe finding out before you get too far into it that it is not what you thought it would That's be, right. and may want to pivot before you get too deeply into it. So the career mentor is an important step in in your career development. Um, where I do gotta, you find one? Okay. Well, I was going to say I got a great example of something that just happened a couple of years ago with uh, one of my former students. This is a student that wanted to be a vet, right? She wanted to work with animals. So she had a plan for that until she hooked up with a mentor. She goes and see what actually happens. She found now it's I mean, I'm sorry to bring this up right now, but a lot of a vet's work is having to put animals down as well. And she quickly found out that it's not something she want to be involved with. So she found out that that was too hard on her emotions. To, nothing wrong with it. But she quickly found out early enough that there was a lot more mental, emotional anguish for her. So she decided to go somewhere else. And the mentor showed her that because the 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 mentor said and I was there, the mentor said, nobody showed me this when I was going through, you know, growing up in my career. And this is something I had to work for years for years to get over. So that's a great example of finding out a good mentor to let you know the good, the bad, and the ugly of it. So that way you can make the right choice. And now, now she's just a college or somewhere else. So she's doing great. That's a, that's, a, that's such an important point. Uh, I'm yeah. glad you reinforced that 
the mentor is not there to tell you what you want to hear as much as it is about telling you what you need to hear. That's right. So you can make an informed decision that's going to have a significant impact on your life. So yeah. great, great story to to um yeah, to to join in with. And then so with that, with that mentorship, it, it, it there's a lot of responsibilities on both sides that comes with it. It's something yes. that's not to be taken lightly. I'll just say, find someone that you admire and start there. If you, if you don't do the research, it's easy to do. It is on the um, widely available, not only on our site, but, uh, but you know, Google it, uh, how to find a mentor. We won't go into too much more detail about that now, but it also ties into something that's equally important uh, in career development, which is networking. So even if, You'd start with people who you admire, who are in a position that you want to be in one day, then those are invaluable relationships, even if they're not a formal mentorship or don't even get that deep. And as someone who's entering a new profession or wants to go deeper and have more success in the profession they're starting off in, networking is as important as anything else. That's right. And and so in that network, and here's... <laughs> I want to take a deep dive into this, Pete. I'm sorry. So once you network, once you find that person, here's, here's, don't just pick anybody either. You got to find somebody that your, that your personalities match, right? Because look, taking on a mentee, which I have one, it's a lot of time that, that I have to dedicate to this person. So this person, I make sure this person really understands that how valuable her time and my time is. So let's not waste it. Let's make sure we plan our dates and we meet on a specific date that we say that we're going to meet. And we don't spend that time chit-chatting. Let's spend that time um, getting to the goal, whatever goal we came up with, smart goal, at the beginning of the mentor-mentee relationship. So you've got to find somebody that will dedicate that time to you. But if they do, do not waste it. Do not waste your time because half the time, actually most of the time, there's no cash being uh there's, there's, there's no money being passed down um, back and forth in a mentor mentee situation. There's a volunteer work. So hey, don't, don't hire a mentor. Like, or, you know, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't don't do do that. that. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's volunteer work. And if a mentor says, yes, I'm going to do this, take it with open arms, respect that time and be a sponge, be hungry, learn as much as you can from that person. And don't be afraid to start asking crazy questions because that's what me as a mentor signed up for is to answer those questions that I didn't have the opportunity to have asked of me later um, before when I was in that, in that career phase. So sorry. No, I'm, that's I need good. coffee. <laughs> no, that's, that's, it's, 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 it's important. We could not talk about mentors enough. That's right. But Let's 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 focus on general networking a little bit more and, okay. and how you can expand uh, your professional network. And so social media has become uh, a great avenue for that. I, I like LinkedIn in particular for almost every profession because it's where it's that's really become the default professional network. Yeah, do you agree with that? Or uh, you think, you know, I, I don't know that there's a better site out there. There's certainly not a bigger one out there for professional networking. Um, No, there isn't. Um, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm going to say this It's becoming a little bit into a Facebook and I stay away from those conversations, but um, they, it's a really good way to find people in your industry or the industry you want to be in and connect with. Now here's here. And you know what I'm going to say here, Pete? Here's the thing about LinkedIn. If you are on LinkedIn trying to find a mentor for the for, for the sake of finding a mentor, it's too late. It's too late. You have to start cultivating those relationships when you don't need a mentor, right? Well, Go ahead. Take it away from mentorship at this okay. point. Right? We've beaten that up enough. It, it, this is just about networking in general for me. Is that you, uh, the, the more people you know, in your field, uh, okay. the, the, the more informed you're going to be, the more opportunities you're going to encounter, the more you'll learn. So uh, to me, it's not about you know, mentorship. It's it's about just building your your network for all the, the positive reasons that come from it. Um, I can tell you that in my own career, my, uh, my personal network and professional network has blended as time has gone on. And that is yeah. where the greatest value uh, has come from where if the I blending? have the opportunity, huh? 
the, the I'm, I'm sorry i interrupted the the blending the is blending yeah find- well if i can okay. if i can work with people i genuinely enjoy and vice versa i'm going to have better relationships with them so That's true i've yeah. built my professional network and i think this is natural i don't think this is unique in any way over time where the people i have gravitated towards professionally I have a, a personal connection with them that that grows and evolves. So it may start off finding these people on social media, but then you you take it offline, so to speak, and have an opportunity to to really build that uh, that individual rapport and professional. I'm sorry, personal connection. So LinkedIn is the default place to go for nearly it every is. profession. Twitter is also an interesting pool to dive into, uh, to wade into, maybe don't dive into Twitter, maybe, maybe wait. That's a great example of a pool. (laughs) Um, already it's not for everyone. I still on the fence with how I feel about using Twitter professionally because it's, it's kind of the wild west where LinkedIn is almost a place where the community, I won't say has standards and guidelines, but will certainly real things back in if they get too, uh, you know, too political, or uh, off the professional track. And you made the point that it's a little Facebook like these days. And that has certainly happened where you see um, a lot of non-business things you know, uh, coming up on, on uh, LinkedIn right now, who knows where that will ultimately lead, but yeah. um, it's still the best business network without having a lot of uh, other things coming, coming your way. And, and, and what I meant to say earlier, it, it's, you know, it's, it's because a lot of people go on there when they need something, right? And and I guess the point I was trying to make is it's you have to make a concerted effort to be on LinkedIn every single workday, every day, and produce some kind of content. You want to be seen as an authority in whatever content you're putting out there. And that would help you build relationships later on when people can relate you, the name and the face, to the content that you're putting out there. And as long as they see those two things together, it'll be easier to to uh, build those relationships later on. Especially if you take it, exactly like you said, if you take it out of social media and you go into a, a, a personal conversation like an event, a conference, all those things that pre-COVID were big, Post-COVID, not as big, but now they're making a big comeback. Have you seen that? Yeah, so conferences is yeah. another great place to yeah. immerse yourself in uh, in the field that you are pursuing or already in if you're looking to advance. Remember, what we're talking about today is how to advance your career. And all of these things probably aren't in your job description. They're probably not uh, things that your employer is asking you to do. So you have to take them upon yourself. And if you are... Uh, an employee at an organization somewhere, don't wait for someone to send you to a conference, bring those things forward. Ask if you can yeah. go. Sometimes your organization will pay for them. Sometimes they won't. And there are a lot of companies that will proactively send people to conferences anyway. But most of the time, those organizations are going to do so for their own business interests. And rightfully so. That's <laughs> their companies exist to, to, to serve themselves, to make a profit. Yes, they want to take care of their employees, but they're not necessarily looking at that individual individual's professional development. Uh, and those that do, great, take advantage of, mm-hmm. of those opportunities, but you may have to go and find them yourself. So trade associations and professional associations exist. Most of them do have gatherings. Sometimes they're virtual, but like you said, in-person is, is back. And it's right. a wonderful place to go and expand. So I recommend, even if you need to take your own personal time, even if you need to do it on your own dime, find a way to go to uh, large conferences in your, in your space, whatever it is. And you'll have an opportunity to meet more people in a day or two than you could in, in a matter of years. So let me, uh, I'm going to give a bonus tip here, Pete. So you said something about five seconds ago that really resonated with me, which was ask your boss. Ask them, ask your company to see if they will pay for it. Let me tell you why that's valuable. Because even if you ask them and they say no, and you're like, okay, no problem. Thank you very much. You go on your own accord. You ask for the time off. You pay it in your own pocket. But it tells your boss you're interested in that field, right? And it tells them that. And the more you do that, the more they're like, my, this person is really, really into this field. They're going to look at you a little bit differently at work. So always ask them. The worst that can happen is they'll say no, 
And if they say no, oh, well, you pay for it on your own. <laughs> but try to see if your boss can do it because they might see a value in sending you out there. What, right? what a so, great thing, right? I mean, yeah. no uh, employer uh, or every employer, rather, they may not all have a way to act on it. But mm -hmm. if, an, if an employee it comes up and says, hey, I, I'm, I've taken an interest in this area. I want to expand my knowledge and my network and I'll, I'm willing to, to do it myself. I mean, that is going to separate you from the pack in a, in a big way and elevate uh, your, uh, the perception of you as, as a professional. So right. great, great tip. I love it and encourage everyone to do that. And I think there's a very good chance when that happens, the organization will find a budget and, and way to pay for you to, to go or at least help out. So um, great idea. And, you know, and, and, th and this next one is a favorite one of mine, right? So let me give you the, the, the person who you're trying to connect with perspective, right? So let's say you're trying to connect with me, right? And you're sending me a cold email. And I'm like, ah, so I may or may not respond to you, right? Because I don't know who you are. But if a friend that I know connects with me and say, hey, I want you to meet Pete. Pete does this, blah, 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 blah. I ain't going to, it's more than likely I'm going to respond to that because I know the person. It's like the mafia, Pete. You got to be introduced by somebody who's already connected, right? I'm not saying we're in the mob. So I'm just saying this is, I'm just using that as an example. So this is why asking a friend for an introduction it, it, for an, an intro is crucial. If you find somebody who who so somebody who you want to connect with, right? You want to learn more about that person and you have somebody in common, ask that person, hey, can you do an intro? Here's what I want to do. And if that is that intro happens, it's it's a higher chance that the other person is going to accept than you sending a cold email. So ask your friends, expand your network to make introductions, it works. Yeah. Well, so what we're talking about here is if you have someone you'd like to get in touch with, you'd like to develop a relationship with, uh, but don't have a natural route to reach out to them personally, other than doing it in a, a cold message, mm. try to find someone else who's, who's connected to that individual. And that's something else you can uh, use LinkedIn for. It shows you the degrees of separation on people. Yeah. So you can, if you're creative and you're motivated, it may take a little time. These things don't necessarily happen overnight, but hopefully you can find a connection to, to that individual and ask for that personal referral and introduction. So really like that. Um, but there's so many other opportunities to expand and be proactive. And one that I, I like a lot is uh, developing new skills. You know, we, mm. we talked about the willingness to go to a, a conference on, on your own and bring that forward to your, to your manager or your employer. But there's a lot of things you can do without having to ask or for permission or, or wait. And there's so many online courses you can take. Oh my God. Again, <laughs> I want to, I want to say it one more time. We're talking about taking your career into your own hands. Yep. No one's going to, going to do it for you. They might, but assume they won't. That That's the best way I can phrase it. And look at the opportunities for continuous learning. It is so important. And if you want to do the bare minimum, you can. But that's not going to help you stand out. That's, that's not right. going to get you noticed. And instead, find a way to expand your skills and your abilities and your knowledge. Um, and all the online courses available right now are just a no-brainer. I wish those things existed when I was. Oh, Pete, I was just about to say career. that. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I I I want to disagree with you a little bit. Um, if you do the bare minimum, you are going to get noticed. Just not the way you want to. <laughs> right. Well, that's that's right. <laughs> That's yeah, right. just not the way you want to know. And look, I, I, you said it, man. I wish YouTube was around when, when, when I was growing up in my career, because it, it, Pete, one of the things I hate to deal with is Excel. And 20 years ago, in order for me to know Excel, I had to go to Valencia Community College and take a course. And oh, it's Valencia College, not here in Orlando. Uh, and 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 take a course. And now, if I wanted to learn how to do VLOOKUP, YouTube. It's, it's, it's easy. You wanted to know all about affirmative action and Title VII? YouTube. There's a lot of information out there that's free. And you, you just have to dedicate the time to it to, uh, you know, to just learn from it. And it, it's there and it's free. And these are steps it. that yeah. you should dedicate that time to it if you're serious about advancing. That's right. And yeah. um, 
We at Zengig are particular fans of Coursera and Udemy for the courses they offer as well. Some of a lot of those are free. Uh, sometimes you have to pay. Often you'll have to pay for uh, to to receive a certificate uh, mm-hmm. that you took the course. But that could be worth it too if you have that on your resume. You're looking for angles here, right? You're looking for ways that you can be noticed and stand out. And as an employer, I can tell you, and and not just as an employer of, of myself, but of someone who has helped you know, you know, thousands of jobs be, be filled o- over the years in staffing, uh, as a staffing company, thousands and thousands when, when a, a hiring manager or uh, someone in HR and talent acquisition looks at a resume, they're making a quick assessment on whether to schedule an interview with that with that person. Now, when we present a resume, my, our recruiters you know, do you know, give one resume at a time. Mm-hmm. But to get to that one resume, we've started with thousands potentially yeah. for, for any job title, depending on how... Um, how niche it is and, or, or applications, look at the number of applicants, any posting on LinkedIn right now. And I, I reference that because you can see the number of applications for any job. They're almost all in the hundreds, sometimes in the thousands, depending on the brand. If it's someone like a Disney or Apple or Google, they'll have thousands of applications for any specific job opening. So ask yourself just a very simple question. What's going to, why would your resume get picked out of that, of that uh, pack? And one of the things is is having certifications on there, mm. courses that you've taken in your profession that show you've done, you've gone above and beyond, and you've taken that responsibility when no one asked you to do it. And I just can't um, promote that enough the, and the value of doing that at the individual level, um, because we know from our experience, the other thing we know is that most won't, right? Yeah. Most, most, <laughs> most aren't gonna, going to do it. So it doesn't take a Herculean effort to stand out, but it does take effort. It does. And, and you know, and, and, and for you to stand out, right, again, exactly how you said, Pete, you know, you can go ahead and just do the bare minimum. That's up to you. But you do get out of it what you put into it, right? So one thing I really wanted to really focus on is there is a plethora of free workshops out there. We did one. We did one a couple of months ago, right? Here, um, uh, 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 it's uh, we did one on FMLA. It was completely free. It's free information, folks. You just have to put the elbow grease to look it up. And we got more coming. We we still got to schedule them here with us. Um, but there's a lot more coming. But there's plenty of free workshops out there. But Pete, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Just attending a work, uh, workshop is not enough, right? Yes, people would notice that you attend the workshop, but what business owners, what hiring authorities, what we want to see is how you're going to apply that information. So that's the important part that some people forget. You learn the information. Now you have to do something with the information. And that's the part that's going to make a mentor, a hiring authority, make a decision on whether they want to work with you or not. So don't forget about that second part. I love it. It's great advice. And there's podcasts, there's books, there's yeah. books you can read, there's audio books, there is more information out there than anyone has time to get a hold of. So carve out that time, yeah. do it at night, do it on weekends, and no one's going to do it for you. So it, be committed to it. And that smart goal will, if you do it right, it'll it'll uh, have that time in there and you can hold yourself accountable. And then there's your favorite topic, Ricky, of course, there's chat GPT. What? It's, what is that, Pete? How about you that? Tell us. <laughs> you know what, Ricky? If 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 anyone listening at this point needs that explained right now, I'm not telling them. I'm not going to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's, so, <laughs> that's uh, true. We, I think everyone knows right now uh, what uh, how uh, widely available these new AI tools are. ChatGPT being the one that uh, we particularly like and know how uh, how powerful it can be, mm-hmm. and. Once again, you may have to invest a little time in figuring out how to use it to to your advantage to get the information back from it that you want, but you're investing in yourself. You're investing in your career. And that's much better than investing time watching the latest Netflix uh, show that, that, that comes out this weekend, isn't it? <laughs> Way better, unless it's a Netflix show about chat GPT. So then we'll see. Well, um, that, no, but- I'm sure that's coming. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. You know what, Pete, though? This next one is my favorite. 
become indispensable. Let me tell you how awesome this one is, right? Because if you become indispensable, right? And, and you know what? I'd rather just tell you the story, tell you a quick example. Now, obviously, I'm in HR. I've been doing this for a while. Unfortunately, I have been involved in hundreds of thousands of layoff conversations. We don't just make a decision about laying people off, right? There's a whole process. And once we go through that process and we get down to the five people who we have who we have to let go, I've been involved in these conversations when somebody says, oh, so-and-so, it's, it's on the list. I'm like, oh, so who's going to do payroll? They're like, what do you mean? This person is the only one who knows payroll. Right? And like, oh, wow, then we can't do that, right? Next thing you know, that person's off the list. Or who's going to do Excel? Who's going to do this? So the, the point I'm trying to make is, Become indispensable, become that person that has that skill set that nobody else has, becomes that go to person. Because if you become that, the more you become that person, the less likely you'll be on that list. I, it, that reminds me of a, of a story that I will, I won't, it, I, it probably won't be a great story because to protect everyone involved, specifically the person who um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking of, I, I can't give any details, but okay. it was a, a, a very active client of ours. And they had an individual who knew how to, he was, this was the only person who knew how to do a certain thing in the organization. <laughs> it had to do with IT, of course. And uh, they wanted to get rid of this individual for so many reasons. Not, mm -hmm. not a fun person to be around, not easy to work with, disruptive, just a, a, a challenging employee to say the least. <laughs> Could not get rid of that person. I mean, this went on for years and I must have heard this organization bring it up dozens of times and and just frustrated with the situation but here's here's the point it was a couple points one don't be that person that everyone wants to get rid of but can't. <laughs> true right? you don't want to do true. that but this person had was indispensable to the organization they and so now that's a different i shouldn't have even told that because it's for a different reason but i couldn't it just was in my head as you it were, makes sense though you it makes sense there right? was no laying <laughs> off this individual that's for sure i mean they would have been the last one standing but there's lots of ways to become indispensable and uh, being reliable, being accountable, um, being consistent, being the person who's willing to to do whatever it takes. So there's so much talk still about quiet quitting. You and I haven't talked about that recently, but I've been surprised how prevalent it still is in the market based on a recent Gallup survey uh, that uh, we talked about on a different show where 52% of American workers are in the process of you know, you consider themselves to be quietly quitting, which means they're disengaged for the, from their job. Over so, half. More than half. Yep. And um, yeah, it's, it's alarming, right? It's an yeah. alarming number yeah. to, to hear and say <laughs> out loud, but wow. that's what the survey showed. And these, you know, the, these individuals um, you know, declared that on their own, right? I mean, they, they, they this, so, you know, it's true. Yeah. And so that's, what your competition is like. And that is, <laughs> you know, don't think that that's easy to hide. If you yeah. are checked out, if you're disengaged, the organization is going to know. So we're talking about the opposite of that. Be that enthusiastic, willing person. And that is not necessarily today a um, uh, a thought that's widely received. And, 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 yeah, it's not necessarily a welcome thing to say, well, yeah. my employer doesn't deserve it. They all, I'm only going to do the minimum of what they pay me for. It's not on my job description. I'm not doing it. If I'm only supposed to work at five, I'm not staying until 501. We've heard all of those stories and you can do all of that, but it's going to limit your success. So right. just do it consciously and know. And so we're hopefully the, no one operating that way is listening to this particular show because mm -hmm. it's about how to advance. And That's you right. and I have talked about this enough where I know your perspective is exactly the same as mine. You will not advance that way. So you can do it. You may keep your job. You may keep it indefinitely, but that's it, right? That you, if you do the bare minimum, you're going to get the bare minimum in return. You will get back what you put into it. You will get back what you put into it. Right. And, and that is an alarming number, Pete, because you said that I'm kind of pause like 52%. That means 48% of the workforce is actually trying to advance, 
right? So yeah, the competition, if you're trying to advance, the competition is not, there's, there's no reason for you to advance if you're doing it for the right reasons. Well, I, I don't even know <laughs> if it says that because that option wasn't available on the survey, which I found kind of um, interesting because yeah. it gave you three options. You're either loudly quitting, quietly quitting, or um, you're know, actively engaged, right? And in, in trying your best. Yeah. So the, the, it didn't really account for the people who were just, you know, are, are in the middle, right? Yeah. I mean, which I think is where a, a decent number lives. So the competition's even lower uh, today with 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 people yeah. who are ambitious and trying to get ahead. So a little will go a long, long way, and that's not necessarily a, a great thing for our workforce, but it's a great thing for anyone individually because yeah. you don't have to again you know, stand out in in some giant way. Be conscious of that. What does your manager need you know, to make their lives easier? What does the organization value in their employees? Look around, pay attention. Who's getting promoted? Why? What are they doing? Emulate that. Ask questions. I'm a huge fan of being very direct to the person who you report to, who whoever makes those decisions about um, you know, bonuses or raises or, um, or, or promotions. Ask directly. What's the criteria? What does it take? What do you need to do to stand out and then do it? I mean, it's, 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 I know that's a simple concept, but it's, it's very special. It's hard for people to follow because I constantly have to tell my students this is do not be afraid to ask your boss for what you, for what you want. And what I get back is, well, Ricky, I'm brand new and I don't think I should be asking for things. Excellent. Ask for help, ask to teach, ask to be taught something. But you want to be able to ask your boss for what you want. If you're going to ask for more work, you got to make sure the work you're doing right now, you're on top of it. Let me put a different <laughs> spin on that, Ricky. Yeah. And I'm, you know, if you ever let me come and talk to your class, uh, I would love to have this <laughs> conversation with them. Um, it's going to happen. Trust me. Don't ask for what you want. Ask your boss for what they want and need. And then uh, operate accordingly. So it's, it, does it accomplish the same thing? Yes, of course. But that's how you're going to get what you want is by delivering what they want to need. And I say this from a very deep personal place where I inherited a boss and you know the story. I tell it often. It's one of the, the life-changing moments for me where I was, I worked for a large organization. I enjoyed my, my job. I worked with a lot of friends. I'd been promoted multiple times. My life was good. And then I inherited a boss who... I did not, um, who, who, who I did not fall in line with, I'll just say. And I, because I knew better and I knew what I was doing. And this person who was new to the company, um, it wasn't qualified to tell me what to do. These were all the thoughts that I had in my head that uh, showed in the way I uh, interacted with, with this new uh, boss and manager that, that, um, that put me on the wrong side of the equation. And it went from a very uh, happy place for me to a miserable place very quickly. And it was my doing um, because I didn't give that individual what they were looking for um, from a performance standpoint mm -hmm. for, for a direct report mm -hmm. because I was doing what I wanted. And that's a lesson that has stayed with me for more than 20 years now and um, painful in the moment, valuable ever since. And so it, what I've always told people is the number one thing, no matter what job that you're in, as long as you're working for another organization or another person, is to make sure that the person who is uh, decides your fate is happy with your performance. Mm. And everything else is such a distant second that doesn't even, it's not even worth bringing up, right? Yep. So if it's, hey, I just want you to show up on time every day. Now, the bar is not usually that low, right? Or I want you to consistently you know, produce you know, the reports that I ask for or um, come in with, a, with an upbeat, enthusiastic attitude every day. That's what I value the most. You'll get myriad answers, a limitless number of answers. But, but if you don't know, then shame on you for not asking. Mm -hmm. And if you know and you don't do it, then shame on you for, 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 for not, not right? acting, just not so, acting on it. Right. So, so if you're, but, but here's an important thing. If you're unwilling, right. If you know the answer and then you're unwilling to adhere to it and, and perform that way, um, then you should probably leave, right. Because you're, you're not going to advance. And that, that's what happened to me. Um, my career trajectory came to a, an immediate halt, hit a brick wall. 
and it mm-hmm. was my doing. And it doesn't matter that I was right. It doesn't matter that I knew more because I wasn't in charge. And you know, that lesson is one that um, you know, I would shout from the mountains. I, I, I tell often because um, it is probably the biggest determining factor between success or failure. Uh, what is the biggest determining factor between success or failure in an organization where uh, you have to report to someone? So that that is spot on, man, because it, it, it's yes, you should ask them, you know, you should not be afraid to ask your boss for what you want, but that is gold. Ask them what they want, what makes their life easier, because let me tell you, when it comes time to and I hate to bring this up again to make cuts, that's going to come into play. Right. Because especially if you're willing to take on new challenges, if everybody else around you. It's, it's, it's really good at articulating a problem and it's really good at telling you what the problem is, but they're not good at taking on the challenge and fixing that problem. There's your key. So take on new challenges. Let me tell you, every employee that I had, what made my spine tingle in, 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 in happiness is when somebody says, hey, boss, don't worry about it. I got it. I got it. I'll have an update for you in three days. Boom. I don't have to worry about it no more. That is item number 7,476 that I don't have to take a look at today. Right. right. So if you right. make your, your your boss's job easy, you are in their good graces. And I know how this is coming across. I know people are saying, Ricky, you're saying you should brown nose. You're saying you should kiss butt. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you should be a team player. The chemistry has to be there. and You have to be able to form really good, solid business relationships. That is the key for you to advance. It's those personal relationships. You And it goes back to the networking. Right, Pete? That's it. Well, it's all tied together. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we'll tie so, together. And yeah. I think that's a perfect way to end. You made you made um, you know another excellent point. So, take control of your own destiny, mm-hmm. right? Set goals, find a mentor where you can, network, take initiative in doing new things, and then ask ask for um, you know, ask for for what's needed and and, and wanted yep. from you in the organization that you're in. And if you do those things, success will come your way. That's right. I really believe that. That is right. And if you don't not immediately, not well, immediately, but you got to be patient because, but it will happen at some point. That's it. Right. That's yeah. it. So that is it for today. Ricky, thank you so much. This is, yeah. um, you know, we almost stayed under 45 minutes. We were close. Almost. Not, right. Not quite. Yeah. But that's a smart goal for next week. That's right. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll put a time frame on it, but thank you for listening to this episode of finding careers. in. we hope you have uh, benefited from it. We'd love to hear your feedback. So email us, please questions at zengig.com, Z E N G I G visit our website and give us feedback on that too. The more you share uh, the better, and we will create content based on what the market needs. We, think about that every day. And, and, right. um, and if you see something or you don't see something that would be valuable, we'll, uh, we'll do our best to accommodate it. So we we'll love the feedback. Roger that folks. Again, thank you very much. Have a great one and good night.